It is Monday, March 1st. I'm Sam Cedar. And I'm Lucy Steiner. Which one of these stories will you be talking about today? House Democrats pass a sweeping coronavirus aid package and send it on to the Senate, where it will be gutted and stripped of a $15 minimum wage by Republicans and bureaucratic nonsense alike. Meanwhile, President Biden releases a statement on the Amazon Union Drive in Bessemer, Alabama. Sort of. He forgets to mention the company itself, of course, but it's a start. And lastly, New York Governor Andrew Cuomo is hit with a new wave of sexual impropriety allegations and releases a half-hearted apology in an attempt to save face. You're listening to Majority.fm's AM Quickie, and these are the stories you need to know. The House of Representatives passed a sweeping coronavirus relief bill on Saturday morning, which includes $1,400 direct payments and a nationwide increase to a $15 minimum wage. But the latter part of that massive leap is almost certainly going to get crushed in the Senate. On Thursday, the Senate parliamentarian ruled that the $15 minimum wage was not permitted to be in the massive coronavirus aid package Democrats are hoping to pass in the Senate. The specifics of this decision are a bit convoluted, involving the budget reconciliation process, some other procedural things, but what you need to know is this. An unelected bureaucrat said that the $15 minimum wage can't happen. Fortunately, there are two ways Democrats could get past this. One is Vice President Kamala Harris overriding the parliamentarian, a strategy the GOP has used before and would be relatively easy for her to do. And the other is eliminating the filibuster and passing the bill without the budget process. The latter is still, frustratingly, a long shot. And unfortunately, Joe Biden and the Senate Democratic leadership have already indicated that they aren't willing to take the first option. Progressive outcry to this has been understandably loud because it's basically a declaration that congressional decorum means more than actually getting people a livable minimum wage. What happens next is that the Senate guts the bill and sends it back to the House, meaning this whole mess added another step before Americans can get any actual help. President Biden has finally broken his silence on the major union battle between workers and Amazon in Bessemer, Alabama. On Sunday night, Biden released a video stating explicitly that his administration supported workers' rights to form a union and condemned employers' attempts to interfere with the process. Of course, that's exactly what's happening in Bessemer. And while Biden did mention the election in Alabama, he didn't mention the company doing all the union busting by name, nor did he explicitly endorse the union. He simply reiterated that he believes unions are good for workers, saying, quote, it's not up to me to decide whether anyone should join a union. But let me be even more clear. It's not up to an employer to decide that either. The choice to join a union is up to the workers. Full stop. End quote. That's a pretty big step forward. It's unequivocally good to have a U.S. president willing to endorse organized labor in such definitive terms. But it is disappointing that Biden didn't directly call out Amazon for the destructive work they've done so far to stop the union from forming. Still, any boost that the workers in Bessemer can get is a good one. Let's hope this isn't the last we hear from Biden on the subject. Majority.fm's AM Quickie is fueled by JustCoffee.coop. Just Coffee is a worker-owned coffee roaster based in Madison, Wisconsin, that has sponsored the Majority Report for nearly a decade. Check out their collection of fair trade roasts, including our own Majority Report blend. And regardless of what you order, receive 10% off your order when you use the code MAJORITY at checkout. And all shipping is free. That's coupon code MAJORITY at JustCoffee.coop. Finally, the allegations of sexual impropriety and harassment against New York Governor Andrew Cuomo continue to mount and the pressure is spilling over from New York state politics into a national scandal. On Saturday, the New York Times published a story including yet another woman's firsthand account of impropriety and harassment by the governor. The latest allegations aren't explicit. The governor didn't make any overt physical moves toward the victim, but he did establish a pattern of speaking inappropriately to a 25-year-old aide asking her questions about her personal and sexual life. This adds to a declaration last week from a former Albany official that the mayor harassed her for years and once kissed her without her consent. In response, the governor offered this so-called apology, quote, I acknowledge some of the things I have said have been misinterpreted as an unwanted flirtation. To the extent anyone felt that way, I am truly sorry about that. 
Cuomo has called for an independent investigation, although he tried at first to choose who would oversee the process himself. He was forced to relent when he got blasted by New York Attorney General Tish James, who will appoint an investigator with subpoena power. We'll see what shakes out of the tree when that person starts to rustle the branches. And now for some quicker quickies. Quicker quickie. Madison Cawthorn, the upstart mega Trumpist congressman who has positioned himself as the face of the new GOP, is also showing his predictable colors. The Washington Post reported on a wave of allegations against Cawthorn, both of sexual assault and of repeatedly lying about his background in campaign advertisements and other public venues. Donald Trump won the straw poll for the 2024 GOP nomination at CPAC, the annual conservative convention, although only 68 percent of respondents said they actually wanted him to run again. In other words, he's the future of the party, but not everyone is happy about that. The Supreme Court will hear its most important voting rights case in almost a decade as it considers a case which could strip a provision from the Voting Rights Act that lets civil rights attorneys sue over potential discrimination in voting laws, which state GOP organizations have been racing to gut for months. Finally, Joe Biden celebrated his inaugural airstrike of a foreign country we're technically not at war with on Friday, striking a base controlled by Iranian-backed militia members in Syria. His administration claimed that the strike was defensive in nature, whatever that means. Quicker, quickie. That's all for the AM Quickie. Join us live this afternoon at noon on the Majority Report or later as a podcast.